Okay. Where do I go from here? What's up guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are starting the clutch install on the Corvette. Um, I did pick up a twin disc clutch from Monster. I'm excited to show you guys that here in a little bit. And then I did get a rebuild kit for the torque tube. Before we get started on that, I gotta get these tires out of the way. So I figured we'd give you a quick sneak peek at the new track setup. Oh, I finally got my big kid tires. Uh, they are Nitto NT01s and they are pretty sticky just sitting here in the shop. I feel like a cross rocket tire. <laughs> It's pretty awesome. Uh, these are 305, these are the rears. They are 305 3019s, and then for the front, I went with a 275 uh, 3518. So we should get all the grip. All right, we got the wheels and tires off. I do apologize if you can hear the fans. It's kind of a must right now, it's pretty toasty. But I did remove the brake caliper. I was looking in here, and all we're gonna have to do is remove this tab right here, just unbolt it and this whole setup can just stay right here the caliper and the line and everything now i know i shouldn't be hanging the line like that but we've got new stainless lines that we'll be replacing this with so i'm not too worried about it and then the hard line for the passenger side is, is right there so you're just, you'll just go ahead and leave the passenger side caliper on and then just disconnect it from that side i'll get more into it here a little bit later also i'm getting the x pipe and the mid pipes out now we just need to go ahead and remove the headers. Once I get the headers out, we can start with the 36,000 bolts that are holding the trans tunnel pan in. I mean, it's not that many, but there's a shit ton in there. Okay, I got the headers out. So much room for activities in here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the engine mounts too after we get the clutch installed done. I might as well just do it while there's that much room in there. Um, got the trans tunnel pan out. But yeah, this is what I was talking about. There's a shit ton of screws that hold that thing in. Uh, I got the other header over here. I did just assemble the new trans jack that I picked up. I uh, got it from Harbor Freight. Wasn't that bad at all. You just go ahead and put these ends on right here. And then if need be, uh, bleed the ram. Now I've decided, because I totally spaced it, that I need to go ahead and do this right now. I'm going to remove the center console, uh, pull the shifter out, and then we can go from there. I just don't want to get too dirty before I do that. And I probably should have already done that already. Now I know I didn't show the removal of the exhaust and I'm not going to show the removal of the shifter, but I do have videos on that already uh, when we did the short throw shift kit and then when we did the header. So if you guys want to check those out, uh, if you guys have any questions on those, um, I will post the videos in the description below or just go ahead and comment. Center console is out of the way, got the shifter out, I've actually got it right here. Um, I am running a MGW short throw. This thing is amazing. This is my favorite mod still to date. Now it does have a return spring that centers it. Um, finding third is much easier than it was with the stock shifter. All you guys with the Corvettes, you guys understand, third can be a pain. This fixed that completely. Now we're to the removing the shock part of it. Um, I cannot wait to replace these with coilovers. But anyway, you're gonna want two 13 millimeter bolts right there and there. You're gonna go ahead and pull those. Uh, then we're gonna move to the control arm, which are two 18 millimeter bolts right there and right there. Uh, then we'll move to the brake union that I was talking about earlier. Uh, go ahead and remove that. Then the rest of it will drop with the cradle down. Um, we don't even have to remove the caliper on the passenger side. Uh, now we want to remove the e-brake. And then there's also a ground right there that you want to pull. Don't forget about the ABS sensor. And then we'll just kind of feed this harness out uh, through the cradle. Okay, everything's disconnected on this side. Passenger side's all disconnected. I know it's kind of dark, can't see everything. And we do have the wiring harness. I got the wiring harness all the way pulled up to the front of the transmission. Um, once we drop it, I will show you, uh, give you guys an idea of where all those connectors are. But what you want to do is go ahead and pull them all from the driver's side, all the ones that come from the driver's side, all the way over to the passenger side, and then they'll drop down this way. 
which I'll give you a better idea of what that looks like tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna call it a night. I did stay well past the hour that I gave myself. Uh, I just kind of got into it. I couldn't stop. Just wanted to get it done, but. Tonight's, or right now is a good stopping point. I am exhausted. Um, like I said, the harness is up to the front. Basically, all we need to do is disconnect the torque tube bolts that are connected to the bell housing, and then we can undo the cradle bolts and we can drop her down. Uh, so we'll pick up on that tomorrow, and then we can get right into the clutch and all that. So yes, I cannot wait. Don't worry, I am not too party in this. We'll just pick back up tomorrow. Okay, we're back here on night two. Now, it didn't take obviously a full day or night to get to the point where we left off last night. It maybe took about three hours, three and a half hours to get to that point. Uh, mostly because I was just kind of looking around seeing if there's anything else that needs to be fixed. But I've already been here for a few minutes. I'm already sweating. I got the hydraulic line for the, or the clutch hydraulic line disconnected. I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick. Now it's actually very difficult to show you guys, especially without very good lighting, but I don't know if you guys can see that blue towel down there. Um, it's kind of blocking off where you disconnect it. It's right under the brake booster here. And here's the new one right here. So you'll, it's a big fitting like this. You'll just take the flathead like I did, pop up, pop up it up under there, and then just release it. You'll be good to go. Got the last five torque tube bolts out that go into the bell housing. Now we're on to our final four that are holding the cradle in. We've got one right back here, and then one right up there. And it'll be in the same exact spot on the other side. And then this thing's ready to come down. So what I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna drop the cradle just past that bolt right there. You just want them to clear just enough. Because of the composite firewall, if you have it at too much of an angle, it'll crack the firewall. I don't want any part of that. Okay, the jack's all situated. Hopefully this works out well. Um, I did put leave just a couple threads on the bolts on both sides on the back side just in case because I'm going to go to lower it and just in case this thing gets crazy and just cuts loose. Um, I don't want it to drop completely out. Here we go, boys. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where do I go from here? Yes. It's fucking out. Oh, piss, that's heavy. All right, she is out, and the struggle was real. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know it wasn't that graceful, but she is out. I am so pumped. Oh, looks like I had a furry little creature living up here. Awesome. So in the beginning, I was struggling because uh, I accidentally left the exhaust. Well, accident. I didn't really realize I would have to take the exhaust off. But when I was trying to push it back, it was running into the exhaust. So I had to pull the exhaust, got back under there, then found out that when I removed the shifter, um, I should have removed the entire assembly because I can't remember if the stock one sticks out this far, but the MGW one sticks out pretty far. So it was going to get... It was hitting fuel lines and shit, so I didn't want to bend those. So I had to get in through the tunnel and undo this, which wasn't the best, but a lot better than taking out a bunch of fuel lines. So I took some time, cleaned up the torque tube a little bit, cleaned up the transmission, got all the grease off of it. Um, I did notice that the filler screw was actually pretty loose. So when I bought the car before I picked it up, they had actually changed out the fluids and everything. I don't think they tightened that all the way because there was just crap everywhere i'm sure you guys could see when i pulled it out but all cleaned up now 
it's honestly killing me not giving uh, the cradle and all the control arms like a bunch of love, but I just don't have the time right now. That'll be a winter thing when we do the poly bushings and all that. I'm gonna clean those up, either paint them or just get them looking brand new again. I'm not sure yet, but it's gonna kill me putting it back in like this. But for the sake of time, I can't really do anything about it. Um, I am gonna change out the transmission mounts though while I've already got it out. Uh, I'll probably do that here in a bit. Um, looks like it'll be a lot easier than when it's in the car. Also ended up pulling the clutch. I just kind of got after it. I apologize. It's kind of hard to get the camera up in there anyway while I'm working, but I'll do my best to explain it here in a minute. But you guys can see this clutch is pretty well fried. It is the stock clutch. It is the factory clutch. And I had felt like it had been slipping like literally ever since I got the car. And I think this is why she's pretty toasty. And yeah, the look at that. It's just shiny. That's not supposed to be shiny. There's supposed to be little grooves right here and those are straight gone. But out of the whole thing, I think, I think the bell housing was one of the hardest parts to actually get out. Uh, besides these two bolts right here, um, this one was actually, I don't know which one was harder. Either way, the bolt sucked. Um, there is, and once you get those all off, there is a wiring harness that goes right here. Uh, which is kind of a pain when you're trying to pull it out because it smashes in between the firewall So it took a little bit of Trying to get it out. I'll explain here when we get up under there, but yeah Also pretty sure I got a bad Rear main leak because it is just full of oil in here. So to get to the top two bolts. I ended up unbolting the cradle I got it all the way down, obviously still leave it threaded. I've got it lifted right now by the jack because I didn't want it just sitting on there for a while. But to get to it, I let it sit on the bolts. I just undid all four of them to that point and it gives you just enough room to get your uh, socket in between the firewall and that bolt. Unfortunately, this is the best lighting I can get in here right now. All my flashlights are actually dead. But I don't know if you guys can see that right there. There's the wiring harness that goes across the top. And also, my rear main seal is leaking like crazy. So, I had a feeling that that might be a thing. I already got uh, a new seal for it and everything. I'm going to go ahead and install that here shortly. And then you got your pilot bearing right here. Um, I have, I rented a puller from AutoZone. I'll go ahead and show you guys how I'm going to do that. Uh, it should be pretty simple. And here's the new clutch. It is a Monster Series S twin disc clutch. It holds up to 700 re rear wheel horsepower and torque. Um, comes with everything you need, bell housing bolts, new bell housing bolts, uh, clutch flywheel bolts. And then I did, and you guys should do it as well if you guys are going to be doing it, I got the upgraded billet release bearing because the stock one is plastic. It works fine for your stock clutch, but if you're going to run an aftermarket setup, I definitely recommend spending the extra 80 bucks because it's a lot better than having to get back under here and then redo it again just because you wanted to save a little bit of money. Um, then it comes with pilot bearing, the alignment tool. Then also from Tick Performance, I went ahead and got their speed bleeder because it's basically impossible to bleed this thing without it. So I went ahead and got that. Show you guys how I'm gonna run that. And then the slave cylinder, I went ahead and got the GM slave cylinder from Tick as well. Um, these monster clutches are meant to run with the GM slave cylinder, so I figured it'd be just great. So now what I do is I'm going to go ahead and get this installed right now. And then um, I got to tear the torque tube apart, get the couple bushings replaced in there. And then I'm going to go ahead, get the slave cylinder on, and then we can check our air gaps. Okay, rear main seal's out. Um, as you can see, it's a little mangled, but I went, <laughs> I didn't have the right gasket puller. So I went ahead and took a thin flat head, got up under there, hit it a couple times with a hammer, just a f light hits. Then you get up under there because there's a little metal ring in there. I don't know if you guys can see, but if you get up under there and bend it up, it'll pop right out. So got this out. Um, what I did was, when I put the new one in, it comes with this little guide right here. You put this piece over the crank and then it just presses right off into there. It almost goes right into the cover. Uh, and then what I did was, cause it wasn't flush yet, is I took this, it's just a puck uh, for the bottom of the car. I took the little eyelet screw out and then you take it and you just kind of go around the gasket. I went around it with a hammer and made sure it was flush. That's good to go. 
Now the pilot bearing, uh, <laughs> that was a bit more of a pain because I got the wrong tool. Um, I don't know if they heard me correctly or not, but this one's too big to get in there. So as you can see, it's on a giant slide. So it's a little bit of a pain trying to hold this piece in right here. And I just barely had a little hook right there. I had to hold this with my finger while I slid it uh, with the other hand and finally it grabbed enough, popped it out. Get you guys a quick shot. Rear main seal is nice and flush. And then pilot bearings in, good to go, nice and straight. We just gotta get the flywheel on, torque it down, then we get the clutch on and we're set. Wanted to get you guys a quick look at the clutch while it's out. This thing is awesome. As you guys can see, I already started taking it apart. They will come torqued from factory. So make sure you've got yourself like a flywheel holder like this. My grandpa actually hooked it up, gave me one of these after we did the cam build uh, for the 5.3. And that helped a lot getting the flywheel and all that undone from out from underneath the car. So just held on to it, it just grabs on like that and then just holds it in place. Worked out great. Uh, you will notice that they did put paint marks or grease marks. I'm not sure, I think they're actually paint. Maybe just grease. Either way, make sure you have these lined up. Keep those lined up, because you will have to take this apart, obviously, to get the flywheel on. But just make sure when you're reassembling it that those go where they need to be. They do also recommend hitting it with brake cleaner, because as you guys can see, there's like fingerprints and just shipping grease and crap on there. So we get this piece out, uh, hit it with some brake cleaner, um, hit this plate with some brake cleaner. I'm gonna try my best not to get uh, these grease marks that I was just telling you guys about though, because that's gonna be kind of a pain. I might have to mark them with a marker myself, but I think we should be good. Flywheel's on, all cleaned up, torqued down. Uh, now you hit it three different times. Uh, you do 15 foot-pounds, 37 foot-pounds, and then you hit it with 74 foot-pounds. And I did it just like when you put your wheels and tires on. Started here, went across, there, boom, boom, boom. Good to go for all three one. Clutch is installed, all torqued down. It's another three phaser, so you're gonna hit it with 20 foot-pounds, uh, did 40 foot-pounds, and then finish it off with 52 foot-pounds. And like I did with the flywheel, do cross from each other. Uh, I also put red Loctite on it because it is going into an aluminum flywheel. They also recommend it, so just went ahead to be safe. But best part, yay! Got the torque tube all pulled apart, and I am not gonna lie, this was the hardest part, getting this retainer clip off. This was a giant pain. Anyone that's been in here, you know the pain. This thing was hell. Um, it took a, a couple blisters and some time, but I finally got it out. It just holds this whole assembly in there. That's all that holds this in. Then what you wanna do once you get that free is go ahead, take a piece of wood, you put it right there on the end of the output shaft, it'll be right there, and then give it a couple whacks with the hammer and it'll break free. But the reason for me taking it apart is, if you guys seen the earlier videos, I got a full rebuild kit for it, new bearings and new bushings, but these bushings look brand new still. They look just as good, if not better, than the bushings that I've got waiting to go on. So this might just be like a winter project because I took it by my dad's. He checked the bearings on and everything. He said the bearings are awesome. I, I didn't feel any grabbing or anything. I heard a little bit of noise, but that's just standard. It's no grinding or anything. There's no lobes or anything. He took a good look at it. Everything checks out. So that wasn't a waste, taking, taking the time to get that. It was, I'm glad I know now. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that back up. We can go ahead and get uh, the slave cylinder on. Um, I wanna go ahead and check the air gap for it. So I took this all apart. I'll explain here in a minute when I get it all set up, I'll explain to you guys how I did it, uh, check for the air gap. Drive line's all loaded back up in the torque tube. I've got the slave cylinder all bolted down. I did use some blue Loctite on there on the two screws holding it in. Uh, it doesn't call for it, but I figured it'd be a good idea. Really don't want those backing out. Uh, if you guys can notice, I did put some heat tape on here and then put some heat wrap on the clutch line. If you've ever <laughs> went to shift gears and your clutch didn't come off the floor, yeah, you're gonna wanna protect it with some heat. Uh, I've had that happen a few times um, in a spirited drive against the ZL1. Uh, my clutch stayed on the floor, so I don't want any part of that. Uh, I did the best I could with protecting it from the heat, so hopefully this will help. Uh, this one actually did come with the factory of the silver, but I just went ahead and put the gold over it too, so hopefully that'll help a lot. 
And then uh, I'll show you guys how I did the air gaps here real quick. Got the camera set up best I can with the little tripod. So what you're gonna do is take the bearing support right here. I pulled the bearing off real quick so you guys can take a look. Uh, mine is billet. You guys may have the plastic one. I do recommend upgrading to the billet one. But make sure it's completely flush. You're gonna want it completely flush, no gap at all. Um, to achieve this, because mine was only getting about yay uh, with the new slave cylinder, is go ahead and disconnect, pull the line off, and then it'll seat. You can push it. Do look out though, because fluid shoots out. Um, and yeah, just make sure you're not spraying on anything. Make sure that's super flush. Take your bearing, slide it over the top, and then there you go. Now what I did is I went ahead and took my flat edge, make sure it's nice and flush with the bearing. Now this is just for demonstration purposes, it's not gonna be exact. Uh, take your calipers, you're gonna wanna measure where the torque tube is and then to uh, your straight edge right here. You're gonna wanna measure that gap right there from the torque tube to your straight edge and that'll give you the first measurement the first measurement i showed you guys because it's a little easier it's actually your measurement b so you're going to want to put that right there at least i don't know how the other clutches do it but this is how monster clutch does it it's pretty sweet you just write it down in here and if you have any questions you just send them your a and b and then you go from there but we got 3.036 uh for that one that's what i got and then i'll show you guys the clutch try my best to explain this part because it's kind of a pain getting the camera wedged in here but i've got i've got the flat edge taped to the bell housing now you're going to want to hold it in place when you guys go to actually do this take the end of the caliper and you're going to want to slide it oh, you're going to want to slide it to where it touches the tallest point of the fingers right there the clutch fingers i hope you guys can see that you're going to want to measure that from the clutch finger to your straight edge right there once you get that measurement from the clutch finger to the bell housing you are going to want to remove the thickness of your straight edge so whatever the thickness of this is you're going to want to minus it so just take it measure it right there mine was equal to now to 0.06 so the gap was 3.222 minus the 0.06 and we get 3162 I apologize for the bad handwriting and the terrible lighting right now, so I hope you guys can understand what's going on right here. Tried this a few times, obviously. So there's our A right there, 3.162. And then here's our B, 3.036. That equals 0.126. So there's your air gap right there. You minus A to B, you get C, and that's your air gap. And the money zone is 0.125 to 0.200. Um, any more than that, you're going to want to look at getting a shim. And like it says right here, uh, A should never be smaller than B. If A is actually smaller than B, then you've got an issue with the clutch or something happened. You're going to want to double, triple check. Always, I'd measured at least three different times minimum just to even get that. As you guys can see, I did it a few different times here. But yeah, that's the gist of it. Dust cover and spring are mounted. Everything's back together, ready to go. I got the torque tube mounted to the transmission. This is ready to go. Got the new transmission mounts, the new Henson transmission mounts. They're ready to go. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I did cap off both brake lines. Um, this was actually from my fuel pump, uh, the one I got. So I just used that to cap it. because I don't want any dirt getting in the lines. But yeah, I just couldn't remember if I mentioned that earlier. She's ready to go back in. Got her back in. Now, I apologize, I didn't do a time uh, lapse, all that. I just, I'm really behind on the build right now, so I just wanted to get it in, and we're running low on this battery we got going. So, it's bolted, not completely bolted in. Um, obviously, need to do uh, the shocks, the control arms, but torque tubes bolted in uh, completely with the bell housing. Uh, I just need to get the harness. And then when I was trying to do the clutch line, I actually left myself a note here that it needs to be done, is the little retainer clip. I dropped it and it fell down behind the fender. So kind of a bummer for tonight or this morning. Uh, I'm not gonna take the fender off and get the retainer clip right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, call this video done. Um, if you guys have any questions, comment below. I hope you guys learned something from it. I uh, hope it wasn't too long. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and grab that retainer clip when uh, we do the wide body. So I, yeah, I don't really wanna remove the fender right now. And I'm just rambling because I'm exhausted. So uh, we got the wide body coming up. We've got coilovers, uh, the big brakes. Um, I'm gonna do fluids, all that. I'm doing all new transmission fluid. I know I should have done it while I was out. I just wanted to make sure that uh, it was level in the car and then I'll do it. So whatever. But thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I hope you guys learned something. I hope it'll help you out. Hope you guys have a great night. Thank you.